Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Statistica. In this lecture, uh, we will study the concept linear transformation. Okay, so linear transformation is very useful because it preserves the structure of a vector space. What? It preserves the structure of the of vector space. Okay. So let's say I have two vectors, which is real and the other is polynomial. Okay, these are the two vector spaces. These two are completely different vector spaces, but they have same structure. But they have same structure. As if I take out the a vector from real, which is which will be like alpha naught, alpha one to alpha n. This will be the corresponding vector in R power n, and the uh, polynomial. The polynomial is represented as i equals to 0 to uh, n and where alpha i pi. This is the uh, polynomial vector. That's how we can frame it. Okay. Now you can see that these are two completely different, but they have same structure. Let's say the vectors here are alpha naught alpha 1 to alpha n and the coefficients of the polynomials are alpha naught alpha 1 to alpha n. Okay. So that's why we say that if I transform so linear transformation is what linear transformation is, is it is basically a function which is transforming me transforming one vector space one vector space to another okay to another so in linear transformation it preserves the structure of the vector space that without changing the structure of the vector space we are transforming one vector space to another now there are many qualitative things in this uh, linear transformation as like the domain that the domain of a linear transformations under certain conditions would be the image image of this linear transformation and similarly if i talk about the kernel kernel and image this will uh, give us the by seeing just the by seeing the structure of the vector space the image and kernel are both subspaces not the subsets of the range of the linear transformations so we'll see these um, one by one the kernel and the image and these are some topics in the linear transformation okay so the structure of the linear transformation the linear transformation would give us the important things about the vector spaces okay so let's just see it so before studying the basic definition of the linear transformation we have studied the concept of mapping okay we have studied this in, uh, in our very first lecture so uh, let's just take a quick revision of it so when i say that i have uh, two sets which are non-empty let's say a and b these are my two sets which are non-empty then if each element of in a Okay, uh, there is each element in A, A belongs to A. There is assigned a unique, unique element of B. If each element in A has assigned a unique element in B, where B is called the image of A. Now, the collection of all such assignments, the collection of all such assignments, all such unique uh, assigning is called the mapping. So, here we say that F is the mapping from A to B. Okay. So, you can also see it like this, that this is A and this is B, where F is the mapping. This is F. Okay. Where A belongs to A and F of A belongs to B, where F of A is the set of images of a images of a okay now or you can say the range of f also the range of f okay now what will be the f inverse b f inverse this will be the this is f and this is the f inverse f inverse f going from a to b and f inverse will be b to a okay so f if i define f inverse of b it will be like a belongs to a where f a belongs to b f a belongs to b and this is called the inverse image inverse image or you can say the pre-image pre-image of b 
depth okay so this is uh, how the mapping is defined okay now we have studied in functions uh, our um, functions as injective injective surjective and bijective which is injective is one one and surjective is on two and bijective is one one and on two okay so in injective if uh, different elements of a have different images have distinct images then we say that let's say i have a function which is going from a to b then if different if distinct elements of a has, has different images okay like this then we say that it is our one one function okay now what is on to in on to if in on to let's see it like this if every element this is our a so this is our a and this is our b if every element in b belongs to b is the image of at least one one a belongs to a that every element in b has the image is the image of at least one one like this that from this mapping we can see that every uh, every uh, element of b b belongs to b has the image of at least one element of a belongs to a and this mapping is called on to okay bijective bijective is one which is one one and on to let's see it like this then this mapping is called bijective where it is one one uh, because each uh, each uh, element in a has different images in b and on to two because every element in b is the image of at least one a belongs to a okay so these are the types of mapping as one one uh, injective surjective and bijective okay now let's see linear transformation that when can we say that the transformation is linear linear transformation okay so for linear transformation let v and w be the vector spaces over the field f okay then a mapping a mapping which is t v to w this is the mapping then this mapping is called linear transformation linear transformation if it satisfies two conditions which are as that the t of alpha plus beta equals to t of alpha plus t of beta for all alpha beta belongs to the vector space v this one or belongs to the vector space v and second one that c sorry t of c alpha is equals to c t of alpha for all c belongs to the field and alpha belongs to the vector space v okay so this is the required conditions these are the two required conditions which has to be satisfied for a transformation to be uh, for a mapping to be linear transformation okay now we can write these two in a single condition in a single condition as that if t of a alpha plus b beta is equals to a t of alpha plus b t of beta for all alpha comma beta belongs to the vector space v and a comma b belong to the field okay so uh, this is the single condition of checking the linear transformation okay so now let's see if i look at into the second number condition okay where c is the vector which belongs to the field which belongs to the field and if i put the value of c as 0 what will be what will it be if i put c equals to 0 in the second equation in second what will i get i got t0 equals to 0 t0 equals to 0 it means this that every linear mapping takes the zero vector into zero vector okay what every linear mapping linear every linear mapping 
takes zero vector, zero vector into zero vector. Okay. Now this is going to be very important because for for checking the linear transformation, whether a mapping is linear transformation or not. So we'll just first check whether the mapping is the zero mapping or not. Okay. Now. Generally, a linear mapping is the uh, let's see the transformation T is a transformation from one vector space V to W another vector space. Generally, the mapping goes like this. But and uh, there is one point to remember that these both vector spaces has to be on the same field on the same field of scalars. Let's say of F. Okay. Now uh, the mapping can be like this if the the codomain space which is w codomain space can be the vector space itself that the mapping is going from v to v okay then we say that, that this transformation is a linear mapping on linear mapping on v okay and if this codomain space codomain space which is uh, w is field which is field of scalars set of scalars then if the mapping is going from vector space v to the field of scalars regarded as vector space over itself okay then this mapping is said to be linear functional linear functional okay okay now there are some important mappings which are as zero mapping zero mapping and other is identity mapping identity mapping so let's say the mapping is going from t v to w for the zero one okay so the transformation is going from v to w then it is said to be zero as t alpha equals to zero for all alpha belongs to v that means that the map zero which takes every vector in v to zero of w then the mapping is said to be the zero mapping okay when every vector in v every vector in v maps every element every vector in v to the zero vector in the w then we say it is the zero mapping and when let's say the identity mapping identity mapping is when the vector space is mapping to itself v to v okay then p of alpha equals to alpha for all alpha belongs to p when the vector itself is mapping to itself then we say that it is the identity mapping okay now if you look at the mapping then um, let's just look at the set of all real polynomials so vector space of all real polynomials let's say p okay now it is uh, uh, its mapping is also defined as let's say t is, uh, is the mapping from p to p then t of px which is let's say differentiation d of dx of px it is also the linear mapping we can check this too we'll check this later later okay so uh, let's see one more which is matrices as matrices as linear transformation how does matrices be formed in the linear transformation let's say i have a matrix of a m cross n where a determines the mapping as a mapping is defined in the mapping as p r power n to r power m defined by defined by p a u equals to a u where u belongs to r power n this is n this is m okay uh, which is equals to and what did we have a is a matrix of m cross m and u is the of m n cross 1 n cross 1 because u belongs to r power n and the resultant of these would be m cross 1 which belongs to r power m as the mapping is going from r power n to r power m okay now i want to check the linear transformation of this whether this mapping uh, for, of matrices is forming the linear transformation or not Okay, so let's just uh, check. So for mapping, there has to be a zero mapping. Okay, so first check for zero mapping that T A zero equals to, it means this is the corresponding transformation. So T A zero equals to A into zero equals to zero. So it is satisfying the first, uh, first uh, 
condition now let's check for another one let's say if i have the vectors u comma v which belongs to r's power n and alpha comma beta with the scalars which belongs to r then t a the combined condition which i told about first and second in the linear transformation we, we are applying that okay and then t a of alpha u plus beta v equals to i can how can i form this let's say a u then it will be a of alpha u plus beta v which is equals to alpha of a u plus beta of a v and it can be written as alpha t a u plus plus beta p b v okay so from this we can see that it is satisfying it is satisfying the both condition so matrices matrix mapping T A is a linear mapping. Okay, so it is our matrix mapping. T A equals to A U. Okay, where U belongs to R power n, and the resultant of this would be from R power n. Okay. 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 So let's check uh, if I the mapping. If I have the mapping as R cube to R cube, which is defined as T of x one, x two. X three, which is equals to x one, x two, comma zero, comma. Okay, this is the uh, mapping. How it is defined, and where x one, x two, x three belongs to R's power Q. Now this is the mapping, and I want to check whether this mapping is linear transformation, is a linear mapping or not. Okay, so let's just take out two vectors from the vector space, which is R Q. Let's say uh, the vector alpha, which is x one, x two, x three, and another vector is beta, which is y one, y two, y three, which where they both belongs to R's power cube. Okay. Now, the sum of these two vectors, which is alpha plus beta, alpha plus beta. What are the two conditions for uh, linear transformation? Which is t of alpha plus beta equals to t of alpha plus t of beta and the other one is that t of c alpha equals to c t of alpha we will check them by these two conditions okay like this that alpha plus beta what will be the alpha plus beta it will be x1 plus y1 comma x2 plus y2 comma x3 plus y3 and that transformation alpha plus beta equals to if i apply the transformation it will be x1 plus y1 x1 x2 0 Okay, then x one, x two will be x two, and it will be zero because it is the transformation. That's how we define the transformation here. Is okay. Now I can write it as x one, x two zero plus uh, y one, y two zero, y two zero, and this will be equal to t of alpha plus t of beta. Okay, you can check it very easily. That t of alpha, if I apply t of alpha here, then t of alpha will be x one x two zero, and t of beta would be y one y two zero. Okay, now let's check for second condition. C alpha, t of c alpha, where c belongs to R, and c alpha. If we check c alpha, what will be c alpha? It is be, it will be uh, c x one, c x two, c x three, and t of c alpha would be c x one, c x two, zero. Okay, and we'll take out the C from here, which will be x one, x two, zero, and I can write it as C T of alpha. So, it it is satisfying both the condition. So from this we got that it is forming the linear. It is forming the linear mapping. Linear mapping. Okay. Okay. We can also check it by uh, like previously whether the zero vector belongs to this or not, and the combined condition, which is alpha x plus beta y. Okay, let's just say it here. We can also check it like this. Okay, now let's get another transformation. If I have the transformation which is going from R cube to R cube, and the transformation is defined as T of x one, x two, x three equals to x one plus one, x two plus one. And x3 plus 1, where x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x3 belongs to R's power cube. Okay, now let's just uh, let's 
check it whether it is forming linear mapping or not. Then we just consider two vectors from R cube or vector space, which is alpha equals to uh, x1, x2, x3, like the previous example, and beta equals to y1, y2, y3. Okay. Let's just take a sum of them, some of these, which will be x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, comma x3 plus y3. Okay. What would be the T of alpha plus beta? The T of alpha plus beta would be x1 plus y1 plus 1. That's how this transformation is defined. x2 plus y2 plus 1 and x3 plus y3 plus 1. Okay. It can be written as x1, x2, x3 plus uh, y1, y2, y3 plus 1, 1, 1. But this transformation is not equals to T of alpha plus T of beta. This is not equals to that. Because, because if I check T of alpha, then it would be x1 plus 1, x2 plus 1, and x3 plus 1. And what, what would be the T of beta? T of beta is equals to uh, y1 plus 1, y2 plus 1, and y3 plus 1. And the sum of these would be x1 plus y1 plus 2, and x2 plus y2 plus 2, y2 plus 2, and x3 plus y3 plus 2, which is not equals to this one, T of alpha plus beta. Okay, so it doesn't form the linear mapping. Doesn't form linear mapping. Okay, okay. Now let's just see some properties of the linear transformations. Properties of linear transformation. Okay. Let's say I have two vector spaces, which are as V and W. We have these two vector spaces over the same field. These are vector spaces over the same field F. Okay. And the transformation is going from T, V to W. This is a linear mapping. Linear mapping. Then, then, first is that T of 0 equals to 0, where 0 is the null vector. Null vector in v and w okay second one is that t of minus alpha equals to minus t of alpha or all alpha belongs to v third one is that t of alpha minus beta equals to t of alpha minus t of beta for all alpha beta belongs to v belongs to v and fourth one is that t of a1 alpha 1 plus a2 alpha 2 2 a n alpha n is equals to the a1 t of alpha 1 plus a2 t of alpha 2 to a n t of alpha n where all alpha 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha n belongs to v and uh, a1 a2 to a n belongs to the field f okay so what are the properties? Let's say if I have the two vector spaces, which are V and W over the same field F, and the transformation and the linear mapping is going from T, which T, V to W. Okay. Now, then first is that T0 equals to 0. We have also uh, seen this in the linear transformation definition that if I have T, C, alpha, equals to c t of alpha and if i put c is equals to zero then it would give me t zero equals to zero that means every vector in v is mapped to the null vector in w okay in w vector space and it can also be checked as if let's say if i have the vector space alpha if i have the vector alpha which belong to the vector space v then t alpha the transformation of it would belong to w as mapping is going from T to uh, P to W, okay. Then I can write this T, write it as T alpha plus zero equals to T alpha, which is equals to T of alpha plus zero, where zero is the null vector, okay. Now, if we look it in the vector space W, then we will have, we'll have T alpha 
प्लस जीरो इक्वल्स टू टी अल्फा प्लस टी जीरो बिकॉज वी आर टेकिंग द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ दिस नल वेक्टर हेयर ओके देन वॉट विल बी दे वॉट विल दिस गिव मी टी अल्फा इक्वल्स टू टी अल्फा इट विल कैंसिल आउट इट विल गिव मी टी जीरो इक्वल्स टू जीरो ओके क्लियर ना लेट जस्ट चेक फॉर सेकेंड वन इट सेज दैट टी ऑफ माइनस अल्फा इक्वल्स टू माइनस टी ऑफ अल्फा Yes, we can see it like this that transformation of alpha plus minus alpha equals to t of alpha plus t of minus alpha t of minus alpha okay which is equals to t of it would give me zero t of zero equals to t of alpha plus t of minus alpha okay so t of minus alpha this will be zero as t of zero equals to zero so t of minus alpha equals to minus t of alpha minus t of alpha it will just substitute these equations okay it will give me this okay and the third one is that t of alpha minus beta equals to t of alpha minus t of beta okay you can see it like this that t of alpha plus minus beta equals to t of alpha plus t of minus beta T of minus beta, which is equals to T of alpha, and by by the previous one, which is the second second property, I can write it as minus T of beta. Okay. And the fourth one is that the T of a one alpha one plus a two alpha two to a n alpha n uh, is equals to a one T of alpha one and the corresponding transformations on the alpha twos. Okay. Now this can be seen by the induction. By the induction, we can apply just the induction rule on it. Okay, as we have already computing it like this that the combined condition of a alpha plus b beta equals to a t of alpha plus b a t of alpha plus b t of beta for the two vectors. We can also apply it for n vectors similarly by the induction. Okay. Okay. So let's just see uh some examples of it. Okay, say if I have the transformation which is going from r cube to r square. Okay, now I want to check whether f of x, y, z, which is defined as um, let's say four and x plus y, I want to check whether it is forming the the mapping or not, whether it is additive or not. Okay, so we'll just check whether f of zero equals to zero or not. Okay, so f of zero, f of zero. If I put all the values of it as zero, then it should map to zero for the linear transformation. But here it gives me four zero, which is not equals to zero. Okay, so it doesn't form LT mapping. No mapping. No mapping here. Okay, so from the this the this thing from the zero vector thing that the every vector in the zero every zero vector in the vector space also maps the zero to the. Uh, One with with one with which with which is it is mapping. Okay, so you can check from by this condition that t of zero equals to zero that whether a mapping is linear transformation or not. We can check. This is the very first condition. Okay, if it doesn't, if it satisfies, then we'll check for the another one, which is a alpha uh, alpha x plus beta y. Okay, then we'll check for the second one. This would be easier, I think. Okay, because if it rejects on the first one, then why will we do this much of calculation? Okay. Now let's see it that uh, on the terms of a matrix. Let's see. Look, look at example of the matrices. Matrices is linear transformation. Okay. If I have transformation as let's say f. This is my transformation here, f of a, which is as r square to r square. Okay. And the matrix mapping is defined as x equals to a a x that's what we have done okay now the mapping is as here is one f of one three equals to minus two five and f of one four equals to three and minus one three minus one now I want to find a two cross two matrix I want to find a two cross two matrix which a maps Uh, something like this. There are the two mappings which are defined here, and I want to find the matrix. Okay. Okay. So for finding the matrix, let's say A be the matrix which is two cross two, and the corresponding elements be like A, B, and C and D. Okay. 
this is the true constu matrix and you can see that the matrix uh, that the mapping defined here that the mapping defined here let's say 1 3 and 1 4 you can see that these two vectors are linearly independent that 1 3 and 1 4 1 4 are linearly independent because one is one vector is not the multi scalar multiple of the other okay so these two are um, linearly independent and the dimension and the dimension here is 2 and the dimension here is 2 okay so we can say that the these corresponding two vectors are the basis vectors of the matrix so the basis here are 1 3 And one four. These are the corresponding bases for this matrix. And if we look for the standard bases, what are the standard bases? We have the standard bases as e one and e two, which is one zero and zero one. Okay. Now I want to find the matrix A two cross two, which is if we look to the mapping. This is a mapping which is F A X equals to A X A X. Okay. And the mapping with the corresponding bases one three and one four is as that A X. What is this? What is this? This is one three. Okay, which is equals to and the mapping resultant mapping is minus two five, minus two five. Okay, this is our first equation. And the second is that a. What is our x second basis, which is one four one four, and the resultant of this, which is f a x. That is that is three minus one. This is our second equation. Okay, now we will solve this. So if I will just put the value of a uh, the matrix. A which is A B C D, okay, and it would be minus two five equals to just multiply this with this, then this will will be A plus three B and uh, C plus three D and three minus one equals to A plus four B and C plus four D. Okay, now the uh, equations are as a plus three b equals to minus two, and c plus three d equals to five, a plus four b equals to three, and c plus four d equals to minus one. These are the equations that I got. Okay, now I'll just solve these equations. Let's just solve them first. Then it would give me uh, a plus three b equals to minus two, a plus four b. Equals to three, which is minus minus. It will be like minus b equals to minus five. So I got b equals to five. B equals to five. Then what would be my a? A b will be three minus twenty, uh, which is a will be minus seventy. Minus seventy. Okay. Now let's just uh, solve second others, which is c plus three d equals to five, and c plus four d equals to minus one. Okay, it would give me minus of d equals to six, uh, which is d equals to minus six. And from this, I got that c equals to um, c equals to twenty three. Okay, huh? Yes, c equals to twenty three. So my resultant a matrix is minus seventeen, uh, five, twenty three, and minus six. This will be my Two cross two matrix. So that's how that's how we can use the mapping. We can use the transformation to find the matrix corresponding matrix. Now I can also do this problem like this. I have the mapping as one three and minus two five, and second it is one four and three minus one. Okay. We know that the standard basis. Standard bases are. We don't have to check whether they are, they uh, the one three and one four are forming bases or not. We just take our standard bases, which are one zero and zero one. These are the standard bases here because the mapping is going from R square to R square. Okay. Now I can write it as that the transformation for the bases one zero, one zero. Okay. I can write it as p of four, one three. Minus three one four with corresponding to these corresponding to these mappings, I can write it as this to form one zero. Okay, so I have to form one zero by substitute by adding or multiplication by multiplying. 
by multiplying in this by 4 of 1 by 3 minus 3 of 1 by 4. I can write these vectors. Uh, I can split 1, 0 in this format. Okay. You can also check like this that I want to write E1 as it is the basis here. I can write this basis in the corresponding A. Let's see it is as alpha and it is as beta. And I want to find the scalars we correspond. I want to write this basis in the linear combination of this. Okay, B, beta. Okay, then this will be 1, 0, which is equals to A. And uh, 1, 3 plus B, which is 1, 4. Okay, then A plus B equals to 1. And uh, 3A plus 4B equals to 0. It would give me 3A plus 3B equals to 3 which will be uh, b equals to minus 3 and a equals to 4 okay from this i can find from that i can find the scalars that i want to find the i want to write the standard basis 1 0 into the linear combination of the corresponding corresponding uh, basis and um, sorry mapping vectors okay so i can write it as like this and i can do this as 4 P of 1 by 3, as we have studied in the properties of the linear transformation, I can write it as this T of 1 by 4. Okay. On um, what, what is the T of 1 by 3? T of 1 by 3 is minus 2 by minus 2 pi. So minus 2 pi minus 3. Similarly, T of 1 by 4, T of 1 by 4 is 3 of minus 1, which will give me minus 17 to 3. Okay. Now let's write for another basis, which is T of 0, 1. 0, 1. How can I write this? Similarly, we will go through with the E2. E2. E2 will be 0, 1. 0, 1. Then A plus B equals to 0. And uh, 3A plus 4B equals to 1. Okay. Now, uh, we will check it as this. Then this would give me B equals to B equals to minus 1. Okay. B equals to minus 1 and A equals to Oh, let's just solve it here. 3a plus 4b equals to 1 and 3a plus 3b equals to 0. Okay, this will be b equals to 1 and uh, it would give me a equals to 1 and b equals to minus 1. Okay, a equals to 1, b equals to minus 1. So, uh, this will be, I can write t of 0 comma 1 as P of uh, plus one minus one. Sorry, I just got confused with the minus here. Okay, so I can write it as one three p of one three minus a is minus one minus t of one three plus uh, what is that one four plus one four. Okay, so if I'll just uh, do the transformation, it will be like T of 1, 4 minus T of 1, 3. Okay. And what is T of 1, 4? T of 1, 4 is 3 minus 1, which will be 3 minus 1 minus 1 by 3. Or T of 1, 3, which is T of 1, 3 is minus 2, 5. Okay. And this would give me 5 and uh, this will be minus 6. Okay. So, I got my... A matrix as minus 17, 23, and 5, and minus 6. Because we write the basis as 1, 0, 0, 1. That's how, why, that's how we are writing the equation, corresponding equation is. The corresponding equation for the basis is minus 17, 23. And similarly for the transformation for the second one, it is 5, minus 6. So it is the corresponding matrix of 2 cross 2. So we can do it in this way okay by finding the basis first and we can use the standard basis too for finding the matrix okay so this is the basic introduction of the uh, linear transformation topic we'll see this topic in more detail in the in our upcoming lectures okay thank you